Sandrilin, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good. Thank you for joining us. Uh, th it's great to reconnect. We had you on the J Rod Contracts podcast show last yes. year. Uh, it's, it's just wonderful. You're such an amazing artist. And uh, Jeff, I don't know if you know this, but her album, Faulkner County, you literally can't get it in Nashville. It's like, it sells like hotcakes. Every time they get it, because I, I don't want to get it from Amazon. I want to like do the whole experience. And every time oh, I yeah, go... I walk into the record store, pick it up. Yeah. And they always say that it's just sold out because it's, it's, it's such high demand. One of the best records of the past two years. Well, thank you very much. I'm really proud of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I was watching your YouTube channel last night and uh, I was glued to it for an hour. Well, and um, before we did this, I, you know, I, Jamie told me about you and I said, okay, let me, I'll go in do my homework and, and check it out. I started reading your bio, saw who you've worked with and Terry Clark, and I've worked with Terry Clark. And um, then I just popped on you, Jamie, I called Jamie, I said, um, he goes, yeah, pop on a new uh, YouTube channel and listen to, I can be your whiskey. I can be your whiskey. So I listened to that and then I just kept on, you know, it's great. And I love the video and I just stayed with it for about an hour. And the thing that I loved about, well, it's just, it, I, I, then I called Jamie back and I said, who is this? <laughs> how did you, how did you, how, and, and I was, and, and I said, this is great. And I just stayed with it all night. And I just wanted to let you know that, that um, it's so wonderful to, um, I love it when, some somebody new pops in for me personally i know you've been doing this a long time and to hear um you and to listen to to what you're doing and to and the lyrics and and uh i just want to say thanks so much for for being here because it, it was it was wonderful to 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 hear all of that last night absolutely and aaron you just released uh, campfire uh, covers what, what's in it Camp, campfire that's campfire the actual name part two Volume two, amazing stuff. You got Willie Nelson in there. You got all kinds of great covers. I don't know which one's my favorite, but let's start with this, Aaron. Tomorrow night, but, and by the time we air this, it, it, must, it will have happened already. It's gonna be your 12th, 12th appearance in the Grand All Opry. Now, Aaron, let me tell you this. I mean, I was born in South America, and for me, the Grand All Opry was like, like Disney World. And then I grew up in Miami, and it was still like Disney World. And to be with someone who's played it 12 times, it's just unbelievable. You know, when I was growing up, that was my biggest dream was to get to play the Opry. Uh, so it's, it's so special. And every time I go back, I just try to take in every moment of it that I can um, to stand there in that circle where the legends that I grew up watching and just the legacy of country music is really embodied in the Opry to me. And uh, I actually worked at the Opry for a couple of years, and I, and I quit right before my first performance. Um, so it was extra special because everyone who works there is like a big family, yeah. too, just like the, the artists, the musicians. And so to get to stand up on that stage and see that dream come true and then surrounded by so many people that I love and care about it was really special. And every time it feels just, just as magic. Yeah. Yeah, that first time you played it, Aaron, um, that must have been what, 10 years ago? Uh, no, eight, about eight years ago. Eight years ago. Tell, take, take me when you were 10 minutes before you were going to step on stage with your guitar. What is going through your mind? You know, it really, it almost felt like an out of body experience or kind of like maybe you were on a movie set or something. It, it didn't quite seem real. Um, but just hugely grateful for that, for that moment and to see that full circle. I, I don't take for granted that I, that I get to play music for a living and not everybody even gets the opportunity to ch chase their dreams, much less yeah. to be able to see them come true like that. So yeah, we talk a, a lot about that, about finding your purpose. And, and Aaron did that from very early on. How, okay, all right. That, so when, this is great, because for me as a photographer, I didn't find it until I turned 40. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, I, 
one of my purposes or intentions is, is, is to, when I talk to 22-year-old kids or, or is, is who like photography, um, where they can focus on it, but take out all the, the stuff that we've learned and stuff like that so they don't have to wait till they're 40 to do it. So that's a great the, the question. Yeah. So how, when, when did you know like, when did you really know, like, this is, this is what's in my heart. This is what makes my heart sing, and this is, um, I'm going to follow. I mean, I really don't remember a time that I wasn't in love with country music. Um, I do remember watching the Nashville Now show. Uh, Reba McIntyre was on, and, and looking at the date of that, of that show, air, air date, I would have been about four and a half, five years old. And um, when I saw Reba singing, I knew that's what I want to do with the rest of my life. Yeah, and, amazing. you know, it's insane the amount of full circle moments I've had, but I recently was able to get a cut with Reba McIntyre. And for the last year, I've been on display with Reba as a featured artist at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum, yeah. which- Right, you sure have. Right, you have a display right now at the Country Music Hall well, of Fame. Closed. They're gonna be opening a new one soon. Okay, well, I mean- 20. This mug was in there. Good, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Very cool, very cool, very cool right? Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Aaron, one of the cool things about like this pandemic thing, I mean, cool things, quote unquote, <laughs> is that people have gotten a, a glance. You've given fans and, and, the, and the media like nuggets of like your life. And it's been really cool to see. One of them has been, you have this really nice meditation corner. Um, tell us a little bit about the role that meditation has in you as a human, you as an artist, and when did it start? You know, I just I just created that here in the last several weeks, really. Uh, but I, I've been interested a lot in mindfulness and meditation for several years and uh, read some different books and things. But I thought that a dedicated space to it would be just something extra to help get away from all the distractions that we have. We have so many things pulling at us, so many different distractions with all the technology and you know your phone dings and your computer dings and everything else so being able to have a little space where i can just try to let everything go and just be uh, is really cool so far so when when you go to that space and you're in that space doing whatever uh, type of meditation you're doing or going in uh, whether it's guided or just by yourself do any songs pop up in that moment? Have any songs popped up in, in those they moments? They haven't. I mean, I'm trying not to be thinking about that stuff, though, because I, uh, I tend to be a little bit of a workaholic, and so that's one of the things I need to escape from mm -hmm. is writing and working and gotcha. doing that part of stuff. Um, it, it is so, um, in, in, in watching all your videos last night, what, what I love more than anything, and even in the country world, is um, women. There's so many amazing new women, and you're new for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm so, you know, it's all perfect when it happens. And I'm so you know, glad that, that you're here, and, and I've discovered you now, and I'm going to tell tons of people about you. And um, there are so many uh, amazing women, women doing, doing this now, and I'm even thinking, more so than men. I mean, there are a lot of men out there doing it, but there has been a flood of brand new, wonderful um, singer-songwriters who are, who are really, really doing it. Um, I, um, w it's wonderful to see women celebrated in this way. How do you feel about, how do you feel about where it's going? with women? Um, you know, I think that there are still challenges that, that we face um, within the, the industry and, and different things, but I know personally I have so many amazing women who've been examples and it really paved the way for, for folks like myself. I'm very grateful for that, and I have a lot of friends who are just absolutely incredible musicians, writers, players that inspire me every day. And I'm just really excited about 
the music that's being made. Um, you know, for one, my friend Alex Klein just had her first top 10 uh, single as a writer, but also as a producer. And she played a lot of the instruments on the, on the record too. Um, and the song is actually the first top 10 single by a solo female producer in country music. That, that, that is so wonderful. And another, the, a follow-up question to that is, how many women producers are there out there? Like really, women who are go-to producers. Um, my friend Linda Perry is, is one, Linda's in LA. Um, how many women producers out there um, do you think, or have you? I really, I wouldn't have an idea. I've worked with Alex before. Um, outside of country music, I'm not sure. I do know that here in Nashville, there are not a ton of female producers at a certain level yet. But in the last several years, I've watched um, people find each other and start to work together. And there's some amazing talent out there. I mean, on top of uh, producers, the first female engineer just got nominated for um, what time of year are we in? Uh, ACM Engineer of, of the Year. Uh, she was the first engineer ever nominated. Janae Fleener was the first. Uh, she's one of my dear friends and a fellow Arcan Arkansasian. Uh, was the first female to win the, the Musician of the Year category. Um, so there's a lot of amazing talent out there that's just yeah. blowing folks away. And we have tons of, to, of folks who have, uh, have paved that way for us. I mean, one of the coolest things I've gotten to do in my career is I got to open, um, it wasn't a show for, for her, but I, I opened, played before Kitty Wells' final public performance oh, wow. uh, interview at the Country Music Hall of Fame when they opened her exhibit. And it was so incredible and get to listen to her and tell her story and um, get to meet her. And I've got to, you know, do that to, for a lot of folks. I mean, uh, and in Nashville, you get to see all kinds of people. I mean, I've been to see Barbara Mandrell speak here in town and she's a phenomenal talent. I mean, I think she plays like a total of 13 different instruments. But by the time she was 13, she was a professional steel guitar player. She played for, Patsy Klein and Johnny Cash on tour at 13 years old. I did not know that. Wow. You look at folk, folks like being able to see those people here too and be in Nashville and be surrounded by that. Um, you know, I saw Barbara Mandrell speak out at the Roy Acuff Theater back when that was open and she talked a lot about her career. Uh, she plays like 13 instruments. She started playing uh, when she was 11 years old doing shows and by the time she was 13, she was a professional musician, she played steel guitar for Johnny Cash and Patsy Cline on tour. The fact that she's playing steel guitar mm -hmm. at 13 is pretty damn cool. Yeah. Absolutely. That's pretty damn cool. So Aaron, why don't you um, play a song for us and then we'll, we'll chat about your new album. Yeah, I want to ask a lot about that. What are you going to play for us? I'm going to play I Can Be Your Whiskey. Oh, a beautiful song. Oh man, I'm going to cry. <laughs> don't cry yet. <laughs> Head pulled down, eyes on the floor Every night you come back for more Order up, maker's own eyes And chase it with a lucky stride I can be your cigarette I can drown that memory That you're trying to forget If your loving cup needs filled up Cause she left you bone dry empty Baby, I can be your whiskey My love's stronger than Nine it proof just wait and see what one kiss can do and if you think it's too good to believe well don't worry baby 
goes this round on me And I can be your whiskey, I can be your cigarette I can drown that memory that you're trying to forget If your loving cup needs filled up Cause she left you bone dry empty Baby, I can be your whiskey Baby, I can be your one more chance, your one more try My love can get you so high I can be your whiskey, I can be your cigarette and I can drown that memory that you're trying to forget If your loving cup needs filled up cause she left you bone dry empty Baby I can be your whiskey Baby I can be your whiskey Wow, look at that, look at that, live, live TV, guys, look at this, this is why we do this, unbelievable. Why does it feel to create that in, in humans, in your fellow humans, with, with, with something that came out of your art? I think it's, that's the powerful thing about music, it doesn't matter what language you speak, it can speak to you. I mean, I know that I've listened to music, um, that I didn't even understand what they were saying, but you knew, you could feel that emotion, that human connection. And, and that, that is what I felt when I was listening to you last night. And I, Thank you. Jamie, Jamie said, if you want to cry, go listen to that song. And it, it, <laughs> I was there like three months ago. Jeff, it, okay. it just got me, it got me again. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay, you can't put You're this in tape. there. It's already on there, too late. Right. Uh, uh, right. Yeah, and that's, that's what it did to me last night. And, and then watching the video, and I went, damn. And that's when he said, watch that. And then I started watching everything else. And then everything, just, everything else grew for me after that. Mm. Because, as you just said, um, the feel. There's a feel in your voice that is so... Um, authentic and real and you know just authentic and real and um, emotional but the lyrics are just I mean I guess and praise you all but I, I, don't I, I just questions. want to double down on that Aaron because you know it's part of you and like you probably hear it and you think it's normal but you know I've been in radio since 2005 since all sorts of stuff genres you really grab the visceral feelings of humanity like I don't know how many people I've, it's, it's very unique. Thank you very much. I'm, that's, it's really, really humbling to hear that because in a way, a lot of music, you know, the muse is there, but uh, I show up and I love it and I enjoy it. And I think how much I love it shines through, but um, you know, it can be very humbling because you know, you, you really, you just show up and, and then the, there's a magic out there that, and I've, been lucky enough to see a lot of my favorite artists that moved me that way too and I, and I just love it I mean there's nothing better than being moved by a song um, so uh, watching the video and and you the characters in the video are real and you're writing about and most songwriters are writing about real people and real experiences you create um, characters in your songs. So what um, touches me so much is feeling your heart when you sing. Feeling your heart in your songs and then seeing the characters. All of them. And, and if I recall, all in, in the videos, it's all about something that's going on in here. 
is that something that you are consciously thinking of when you're writing? I love the flawed human characters. I think, I think maybe people are kind of coming back to that for a little, a little bit too. But if there was kind of a period we went through where, um, and it's been a long time ongoing in different areas where you have these kind of polished characters. You know, people want to have auto tune on their records. They want everything to be perfectly right. on the beat, or and and not just in music, but in life with with film and TV and the Leave It to Beaver kind of, which I love that show, but the kind of perfection that really, even if, if that even really exists, it's only a part of a person yeah. because people are so multifaceted and no person is perfect and we all have those flaws, we all have those challenges. And to me, that's where the meat is, that's where the human is. Um, and sometimes in my music, I feel like it might be a little uncomfortable for people because I don't always wrap it up in a nice bow. Sometimes I'm just showing a piece of somebody's life. And that doesn't mean that it won't resolve later or this or that. But in this moment, this is just how it is. This is just the thing. So the song about, um, what's the name of the song of the woman who realizes that she's going to spend the night with this guy. Tonight, I don't give a damn. Tonight, I don't give a damn. Okay, so, so um, with what you just said, in Tonight, I Don't Give a Damn, it is about this woman who is wherever she is and is going to spend the night with a guy and she knows that tomorrow morning mm -hmm. she is going to judge and shame herself for doing it, but tonight I'm going to do it anyway. Where the hell did that come from? Um, you know, I think it's, it's a thing that we all battle with. Sometimes we have vices that we turn to and th decisions that we make for the short term gratification, uh, the kind of prop ourselves up, use as a crutch. And we already know that we're not gonna love that decision later on. Um, but it's funny, that song, uh, I talk about a Gene Watson song in that, in that song, and I got to hang out with Gene some last year, which was absolutely incredible. He's an amazing, amazing singer, and he's actually the only person that's ever called me on this, but George Jones has a song called Tonight I Just Don't Give a Damn. So I wanted to write a song. It's a, it's a little bit different subject matter altogether, but kind of from the, uh, the other side of that, from, from a woman, woman's perspective kind of being in that moment. And I just think we've, we've all been in, in that moment, or maybe not, but I think most of point in their life, they, they live in that moment where something has really affected them so deeply. They've gone through something so crushing that they can't find themselves in that moment. And they're really grasping to find something to hold on to, something to make them feel something. And I think that's where that character is in that song. It, it's, it, it, was, it, it was wonderful. I mean, I really enjoyed, A, the video, and the fact that um, you came up with that, that character, because we've all done stuff like that, as you just said, and then to see it from a woman's point of view. Yeah. Erin, you've been so good with your time, so generous. Let's, let's finish talking about the, um, the campsite covers, volume yeah. two. Last year, when, when you were in the podcast, you sang Fishing in the Dark, which was great, wonderful stuff. Uh, you obviously have an affinity for all these like, classic records. Yeah. Just tell us a little bit about it, and how do you make the selection? Because it seems like you have such a plethora of like, library in your head. How do you make, cut it so to 10? Many. I could probably do a million different volumes of it, but you know, one thing that's happened during the pandemic and, and having a little more time at home is I finally taught myself how to record at home on my computer. And um, it's been really cool to get to dive in to some of the songs that, that really made me fall in love with country music and still inspire me. And when you go in to record a song and you're having to play it, you're having to sing it, you're having to find your own place in that song, you dive into it in a different kind of way. And I think it's just really energizing, really inspiring. And, and it, it makes me fall in love with the music yeah. all over again. Um, and, and I thought it would be a cool project. I was thinking about, you know, some of my favorite singers, if, if they had done just 
acoustic versions of some of their favorite songs, how much I would love that because you would see some of their influences, maybe get a little insight into that. And, and also just, I mean, who doesn't love a great song? And, you know, if I love a song, I could hear almost anybody sing. And I want to hear, you know, a hundred different people sing it because I want to see all those different parts of it. Definitely. And uh, so that's been really cool. And um, as far as choosing, I just basically, you know, I try to do songs that I feel like I've found a good place in that I can, you know, feel like I do them justice and be proud of them. And I've kind of, I haven't gotten into really, I guess I've kept it a little bit further back song wise. Um, I think the closer you get to now, it might be a little intimidating to cut, cut uh, newer songs, but mm. just the songs that I grew up listening to and fell in love with. And so other than my grandmother's favorite songs that she requests, it's basically just been whatever I take a fancy to and, and want to record and that I can play on guitar. <laughs> Just like the sun over the mountain tops, you know I'll always come again. You know I. Like sunlight dancing on your skin I'm never gone so wrong as for telling lies to you What you've seen is what I've There is nothing I could hide from you You see me better than I can There are some turns where I will spend I only hope that you can hold me now Till I can gain control again Like a lighthouse, you must stand alone. Landmark a sailor's journey's end. No matter what seas I have been sailing. I'll always roll your way again And out on the road that lies before me now There are some turns where I will spend Till I can gain control again I only hope that you can hold me now Till I can gain 
control, yeah. Drop the mic, Aaron Enderlin. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so Amazing. much. Amazing. Thank you. Wow.